A peace that was truly permanent would be the same as a permanent war. This, although the vast majority of party members understand it only in a shallower sense, is the inner meaning of the party slogan, War is Peace. Emmanuel Goldstein, The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism. Hello again. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his sometimes savvy squire. Now we transition to the end of the reign of Sancho Panza, flower and mirror for all insular governors. Chapter 53 describes the invasion of Barataria by enemy forces and Sancho's subsequent resignation. Note how frequently Cidiamete intrudes in these chapters. Here the narrator gives us a direct quote of what the Mohammedan philosopher has to say about how time cannot be stopped. Only human life rushes after its fleeting end more than the wind. Amete poetically alludes to Job chapter seven, verses six through seven, which also compares life to the weaving of textiles. Here also the narrator makes a strange concession to Muslims' ability to reason without the enlightenment of faith, only by the light of their natural intelligence. This is big. Is Amete a rationalist, an atheist, an averroist? The narrator then turns our attention to the rapidity with which the governorship of Sancho ended, was consumed, dissolved itself, and vanished in shadow and smoke. This is typical Baroque discourse. Life is a dream and all things come to an end. Next comes another enactment of war, like those we have seen elsewhere, such as in the hills between the two towns proud of their braying, or in the woods near the Ducal Palace. War comes to Barataria in the dark of the night. Sancho wakes up to infinite trumpets and drums and emerges to find more than 20 people with burning torches in their hands and with their swords unsheathed. They are in panic. To arms, to arms, Sir Governor, to arms, for infinite enemies have infiltrated the isle, and we are lost if your industry and valor do not save us. Sancho contrasts himself with his master. These things would be better left to my master, Don Quixote. He's not up to the task. His servants throw two shields on him like a turtle. He ended up like a Galapagos tortoise, enclosed and concealed between his shells. Did you know? Averroism refers to two philosophical tendencies in scholasticism at the end of the 13th century. One, interpretations of Aristotle by the Cordoban philosopher Ibn Rushd and his attempts to reconcile him with Islam. Two, Christian philosophers who, for their part, applied Ibn Rushd's ideas to Aristotle in attempts to reconcile him with Christianity. The lights go out, Sancho is trampled, and someone stands on his shell and shouts orders for the defense of the palace. When all seems lost, victory is declared and attributed to Sancho Panza. Victory, victory, our enemies flee in defeat by the valor of that invincible arm. But Sancho faints and resolves to leave. The shift from the hectic panic of war to Sancho's slow, resigned withdrawal is a touching scene. He fell silent and without saying another word, he began to dress himself as if entombed in silence and everyone watched him waiting to see what the end result would be. His tragedy becomes a spectacle. Of course, his only concern is his ass, whom he humanizes to an incredible degree. He went to the stable with everyone who was there following him and going up to his gray, he hugged him and gave him a peaceful kiss on the forehead, and not without tears in his eyes, he spoke to him. Come here, you, my compadre, and my friend, and sharer of my labors and my sufferings. When I was with you and had no other thoughts than those that attended to my efforts to mend your trappings and feed your chubby body, blessed were my hours, days, and years. But since I left you, and climbed the towers of ambition and pride, my soul has been penetrated by a thousand miseries, a thousand labors, and four thousand misgivings. And so Sancho departs. Make way, my lords, and let me return to my customary liberty of yore. Let me depart in search of my past life so that I might be reborn from this state of death. Much better for me to have a sickle in my hand than the scepter 
of a governor. Quixotic Mission Sancho Panza attributes his fall from power to which of his personal characteristics? A. His ambition and his arrogance B. His ignorance and his indolence C. His gluttony and his insobriety Correct answer A. His ambition and his arrogance This is a huge moment. Sancho's political experiment culminates in cynicism. Thus, Sancho's speech alludes to a motif from Horace, Beatus ile qui procul negotis, or blessed is the man who stays away from business. It's also an echo of Don Quixote's niece arguing with her uncle, would it not be better to remain peacefully at home? And looking ahead, it's an anticipation of Voltaire's Candide, who insists that we should all take care of our garden. In Spain, Sancho's retreat from politics anticipates philosopher Ortega y Gasset's famous Bene fac loco ili quo natus est, or improve the place into which you were born. Finally, Sancho's abdication of power is another echo of the Cincinnatus myth that would become so popular among the American founders. Two final points about the end of Sancho's governorship. First, he twice emphasizes his total lack of corruption. I have governed like an angel. If we are skeptical, then Cervantes' point seems much like James Madison's in Federalist 51. Precisely because people are not angels, the powers of government must be limited. Sancho even refuses to submit himself to the traditional juicio de residencia, or review of time in office, claiming that only the Duke can judge him. This sounds like corruption to me. Second, in a symbolic gesture, Pedro Recio offers Sancho a medicine that recalls the balsam of Fierabras in Don Quixote Part 1, Chapter 10. I will prepare your grace a drink to protect against falls and thrashings. But Sancho refuses. Tarde piace, too late, he says. I'd sooner become a Turk than not leave. It would appear that there's no absolute cure to political problems. War, poverty, crime, corruption, and tyranny are facts of human existence. That's all for now. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.